course of action is that I take the tape. I give you this tape, you splash it all over the cover of the Times, it gets traced back to me in a heartbeat. You win the Pulitzer and I get indicted. No. I think there's a motel nearby, the Silver Sands. We go there, we listen to it, we leave. Off season. Anything is possible, young lady. I don't know how, but they hey, know we're here. Hey, who is that? Could be anyone. Could be the FBI, the CIA, KGB. Could be a post reporter we for all I know. We need to listen to the tape. You know what to do. Who is it, dear? Oh, it's a newlywed couple. We brought her pyre from home, and it was broken. We were wondering if we could borrow yours. 18 and a half minute gap. Maybe no one is supposed to hear us. What is happening? Nixon. Oh, no, 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 like this, Al, I push the right two buttons, right? What is, is that the news? Are you, are you listening to Nixon? Soak it up. It'll soon be over. Well, 30 years from now, I want to be remembered, Bob. You will, sir. You will. Well, that's no good, Al. So great to see you this morning. I made it. I'm in New York City. Wow. Safe and sound. I know. So everything's working yeah. out as planned for you. You're just, you know, yeah, exactly. It's very ambitious, and you've been managed to socially kind of meet all your, uh, or uh, for all I know, all of your uh, <laughs> obligations or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. I think pretty much. Yeah. It was good to see you. Have breakfast. I'm glad you got to meet yeah. Christina. She's. Uh, yeah. Really Thumbs sweet. up, man. Yeah, she's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. well done. I know she's. she's <laughs> I, I I hope as much she's getting that from her friends, but that the jury's out <laughs> on that. <laughs> well, I as 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 one of her friends now, I'll I'll. Uh, there you go. You can pass along the word that I approve her choices as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, you were here to uh, host a screening uh in in rhinebeck new york which is in the hudson valley this this uh weekend you hosted it at upstate films yeah um in rhinebeck again there's a couple of they have a couple of theaters but this was in the rhinebeck theater and um this is sort of the is this kind of the more or less the launch of your theatrical screenings um yeah so our theatrical screenings started a week ago in LA and New York, um, we did uh, as well as one theater in Maine and one in Florida, and I think one in New Jersey, but it was mainly uh, Lemley's in LA, which was actually our Oscar qualifying run, uh, oh, and, and IFC Center in, in New York City. Uh, and then it actually got held over a second week in New York uh, at IFC Center. So it's actually still playing there. Okay. And, um, so New Yorkers, who are the 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 sort of the I guess the crux maybe of of my listeners or whatever, should go to uh, go definitely go to uh, this IFC Center. Get right, unless they're eating. unless they're in Staten Island, and then it is actually playing at a Regal Theater in Staten Island as well. Oh, you bury the lead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Name the cast. Tell people Kathy Curtin. Of course, everybody knows Kathy's in it because. She did it, the last episode that you were on with here. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Well, first of all, some people the name of the movie is eighteen. I and did. A half. Oh, you half. did. Oh, okay. I did say. Sorry. I did say. Yeah, but but that's okay. Okay. Can't, it's it show, it shows enough. show us your button. Yeah, on your you. pillow. And do you have your uh, mask there? I I do have it in my pocket. Yeah. Um. So the movie is eighteen and a half, and it is about a um. A young woman in the Nixon White House who gets a hold of the missing 18 and a half minute gap in the Watergate tape, and she tries to leak it to a reporter, and they run afoul of hippie swingers and nefarious forces out to get them. 
Here you go. There's my mask. Let thank you. Yeah. Uh, but, but oh, thank you. So those are available um, to the special winner who tiles in. <laughs> uh, so oh, how did your, you know what? I, I don't and know. The cast, we, the cast. Sorry. We were, you asked me. Yeah, uh, go to the cast. The cast. So Willa Fitzgerald, who many people know was just on Reacher on Amazon. Um, she's in the movie and John McGarrow from First Cow. A lot of people know him as well as many other things. Uh, Vondi Curtis Hall, the amazing Vondi Curtis Hall. Kathy Curtin. Um, Richard Kind is in it. Uh, Sullivan Jones. Alana Saunders. Claire Saunders. And featuring the voices. Uh, well, I'm getting to that. I'm featuring the voices of um, Ted Ramey as General Al Haig. John Cryer as H.R. Haldeman. And of course... Bruce Campbell as the voice of Richard Nixon. The Bruce Campbell. The Bruce Campbell. Um, and uh, very good. And and so tell me, uh, though, where, where does this story fit in terms of your own life? I mean, uh, was this always like for me, I'm definitely read countless books on Watergate mm -hmm. and on Nixon. I don't know, you know, if going back to my early childhood, I remember watching the hearings as a little kid, not really understanding them, but yeah. I definitely, mm -hmm. and cheering Nixon's resignation at summer camp and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, we're about the same age and, and I have very similar experiences. I remember, you know, the Senate Watergate hearings preempting Sesame Street and Gilligan's Island and anything else that was on. And then, um, you know, and then I remember I was actually in upstate New York, strangely enough, on a family road trip um, mm -hmm. from Nebraska uh and we uh and i remember staying at some dorm or something and nixon resigning so mm. yeah i have very uh strong memories of that um and but even before that i think i i campaigned for mcgovern uh Me too. Was in kindergarten you Me know? Too. so um and then but i wound up uh, majoring in history and political science in college and so and, and actually one of my professors this was at washington university in st louis one of my professors was McGovern's first running mate, uh, Senator Thomas Eagleton. So, sure, uh, who who was then dumped off the ticket, but uh, which may or may not have been part of Nixon's dirty tricks. But in any case, uh, it was interesting getting to know someone that was involved with that 1972 election, um, uh, even though he didn't have fond memories of it. But um, and then I worked in Washington for a couple of years as a main, well, first as a journalist and then as a speechwriter for um, U.S. Senator Tom Harkin from Iowa. Oh. And so who was part of the 1974 Watergate class of uh, young Democrats elected to the House. So, you know, having known kind of some, a few people tangentially involved with Watergate and, and just being in Washington, you're just kind of exposed to, you know, well, not... Yeah necessarily watergate but it, it's it's an ever-present thing you know leaking not leaking reporters that what is the relationship between you know someone who works in the government and a reporter and do you tell them things do you not tell them things what's a secret what's not a secret so it's um you know whose deep throat that was still a mystery while i was there you know sure. um so and then of Turned course Mark if, yeah <laughs> And then as a filmmaker, I mean, All the President's Men, you know, first I enjoyed it as a political aficionado, but then seeing it again as a filmmaker, you realize just what an amazing movie that is, just from story to performance to cinematography all around. Uh, and I remember actually seeing, a, a, I think it was like a 35th anniversary, uh, a beautiful restored print of it at the Virginia Film Festival about 10 years ago with Woodward and Bernstein doing the Q and A. Oh my like, God. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. And it was, and they didn't, they didn't, they, at the time they didn't appear together too often. So that was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Apparently they, they were a little they, estranged for right, a while. So right. yeah. anyway, but it was, it was great. Um, so yeah, so it's, so Watergate is something I'd been thinking about for a long time, had written about it in slightly other contexts and um and then when the November 2016 presidential election happened, I was shooting the last day of my last film, Bernard and Huey. And then I went out to see Jules Pfeiffer, who lived, who wrote that film. And he lives on Shelter Island, on the tip of Long Island, um, near the Hamptons. And inevitably, we started talking about Nixon and Watergate and making comparisons to Trump mm -hmm. and, you know, how many impeachments could we 
possibly have in the next four years. And then that night, I wound up staying with my friend Terry Keefe, who owned, or basically inherited his grandparents' motel in Greenport, New York, on the North Fork of Long Island. And we took a ferry over there. And, and this place was built in the 50s and 60s and, and had been maintained in beautiful vintage condition by Terry. And he said, well, we've shot a lot of fashion shoots here, music videos, um, and it's a working hotel during the summer. But in winter, if you come up with an idea for a film, everyone can stay here, cast, crew, everyone. And, and he was actually with me talking to Pfeiffer. So we sort of were thinking, hmm, how could you do a Watergate film, you know, because uh, this place looked like 1974. How could you do a Watergate film at a seaside resort? Because, which clearly is not mm-hmm. downtown Washington, it's not the Watergate. So then, you know, collaborated with uh, my writing uh, partner, Daniel Moya, then three of us became the producers of the film. Um, and we came up with kind of a storyline that, that made sense and was plausible about how a young White House um, a transcriber in the, in the Nixon White House could get a hold of the missing 18 and a half minute gap. Mm. Well, and people can actually go onto YouTube, this YouTube channel, and also watch part A, part, first part of where we talked also with Daniel. Oh, your, right. Your co-writer, mm-hmm. And Kathy Curtin, who's one of the cast members in the, in the, uh, in the film. Um, I think we did mention, I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I think we did mention we're going to get the rest of the cast on the show for this, but that's okay. Cause you know, I know you're busy. <laughs> you under I'm, the bus? I'm here, but I don't know where they are. They're all shooting things. I so know. I know. It's hard, um, to, it's hard to track them down. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, anyway, so, well, that's fantastic. So again, you're, you're uh, an 18 and a half for anybody historical, uh, buff, any history buff rather, uh, it's a it's a it's a fun film and there's a lot of great Thank comedy you. as well and as well as um so and what do, what are your thoughts do you think that i mean rosemary woods obviously just a patsy right mm-hmm. i mean yeah, Nixon yeah. They, erased they, the they tape, threw her obviously. they threw her well it's not entirely clear who erased the tape but somebody it did it could have been hall and it wasn't and it was man yeah or or al haig because okay. actually that that's the interesting thing is timing wise is Ehrlichman and Haldeman had already left the White House, oh. but by the fall of 73, Ehrlichman and Haldeman had, had resigned, and the new chief of staff was Al Haig, who we remember probably more so from the Nixon, or sorry, from the Reagan Reagan, yes. you know, And he ran for I'm, president after that. I'm right. in charge here, yeah. But, uh, but people kind of forget he was supposedly the squeaky clean chief of staff. Uh, that came into the Nixon administration, but, um, you know, maybe perhaps not as squeaky as some people thought at the time. Um, Anyway, but in any case, I think it was, you know, the Watergate scandal lasted two and a half years or something really long. Right. Um, I mean, he was reelected in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. And, And, but I think the interesting thing is the 18 happened at Gap was, I think, the turning point in public opinion against him. That was when, when Rosemary Woods did this Rosemary stretch where she kind of took the fall for for deleting the tape and and, and claimed that she had thing? done it. so she she claimed she had done the uh, the, the oh with the foot accidentally with the foot yeah with her foot pedal with her left foot and right and, right, and right, right, stretching right. over with her right hand to push this other button this, that was the, the only st- way she stenography could have machine possibly right. done it and um and there were the 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 Watergate prosecutors wisely did a like a live demonstration of this with photographers from AP and Newsweek and and she wound up like this picture wound up on the cover of Newsweek and Time and on every news channel and you know that really turned public opinion because everybody was like what are you kidding me this is not this is just not plausible that she would do this she's obviously taking the fall for someone else um but who the someone else is, nobody knows to this day. Um, but that, but I think that was a real turning point in the scandal, where which kind of galvanized public opinion a, a, against Nixon. Even even his own, even Republicans were like, "What are you, are you kidding me? This is this is just not you know someone's lying to us." And so uh, and so that's and and then you know a few months later he, you know there were impeachment hearings and then and then he was forced to resign after that. You um, 
Do you, do you have you watched any of the other Nixon films? Well, you've mentioned, of course, all the presidents, man, but there's so many. Well, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's there was uh, Oliver Stone's Nixon. There, um, uh, Robert Altman did Secret Honor. Um, right. There was uh, the great comedy Dick. Um, yeah, I love that movie. I, well, yeah. almost all the ones you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, Frost Nixon was a good one too. Oh, that was good. We yeah, did that on yeah. the show. Um, I haven't seen Gaslit, the limited series on stars yet. Um, I've seen some of the, some of the documentaries right. and then HBO actually has one that is probably coming out this summer that they shot last year called the white house plumber. So, um, but those are more sort of based on, on real people, real things are sort of, you know, mostly you've taken, factual. And you've taken some liberties, obviously. Um, we have taken a lot of liberties. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, ours is kind of speculative plausible historical fiction where we take completely fictional characters in sort of a 24 hour period of the Watergate story kind of surrounded by all these really big events going on in the world. But what, it, but the characters themselves that you see in the film are all fic, fictitious fictional. Top Tom Stoppard would be proud. I don't know. Okay. If, I think it was Rosencrantz and Gildan Stern are dead. Right. Yes. Well, you know, they took the Hamlet story and they just took some of the minor characters mm -hmm. behind the scene that, and, and followed them through the story that was happening in the forefront, which you're not, a, which is Hamlet, but you're seeing, following these two sort of minor characters through, you know, their own story simultaneous. Yeah. It's, it was a great yeah, conceit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, a little, a little along the same lines. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just keep brought that to mind. But um, mm -hmm. now let's yeah, talk about this. Today was very nice. We went to lunch, we went to breakfast, and uh, you you surprised me with a really lovely gift. <laughs> so we're going to show people this, uh, which is a a vinyl. <laughs> yes, a flexi oh, vinyl. A flexi vinyl of two from of the songs from the soundtrack, uh, which is available digitally. You can get the soundtrack yeah. digitally, yeah. but but the as you said, uh, there's even though there is a huge demand for vinyl these days, there isn't the uh, uh, resources or there isn't the manufacturing capacity to meet those mm -hmm. demands. So in order to get something out, you tell that story. That was <laughs> so during the Cold War, um, <laughs> the uh, rock and roll was smuggled in from the West into behind from into or behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, and in, the, in Czechoslovakia, there was a printing plant that would take, because uh, they couldn't get like raw materials for, for vinyl, but they got medic used medical x-rays and they would press um, records on these things right. or, or singles anyway. And, um, and this plant is, uh, is still in existence uh, in the Czech Republic. And so, and in fact, you can, if you pay extra, you can still get them pressed onto medical x-rays, but they, um, uh, but it, it's, what's nice about it was uh, unlike like full 12 inch vinyls, which there's this year long backlog for everyone from major recording artists to indie artists to soundtracks um, for this Czech plant, there was only a 12 week backlog so we were able to get them done there, but it kind of fits with our kind of cold war era movie um the right. uh, the yeah, font yeah. the font that we used in our credits and on, on that um on that record is uh is an east german font from the cold war that the stasi used um <laughs> you know which doesn't directly have anything to do with the movie or does it you know so um <laughs> maybe more so kennedy anyway, so, the kennedy story it might but exactly uh so anyway so we we got we got two of our songs on there so i have a brilliant composer named um uh, Luis Guerra, who actually he does the uh, revisionist history podcast for Malcolm Gladwell, who lives up in the Hudson uh, near you. And uh, but he's also been my composer on, on this film and the last film we did. Okay. And so uh, he's a fantastic musician. And uh, so I wrote the lyrics to a couple of songs. Luis wrote wrote the music um and then we have a great singer named caro pierotto who's a brazilian singer who lives in la but recorded in both uh one of those songs was recorded in la one of those songs was recorded in brazil um and we had a horn section in mexico city because we were working on this chair all during the pandemic and we were um 
you know, the nice thing was musicians were kind of stuck. Well, I mean, the bad thing was they were stuck wherever they happened to be at various times uh, and couldn't necessarily perform live. But uh, so we had access to a lot of people around the world that could really help us out. That's great. Things. How do people get a copy of this if they're interested? And there's two Bossa um, Nova songs. They kind of have to track us down physically. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, there's the, there's two songs on there. There's uh, right one called Dan Brazil- Mervish at exactly. filmwax.com. Yeah, uh, Brasilia Bella, which is kind of our theme song, and that is the English version. In the film itself, you actually hear it in both English and oh, there it is. You hear it in both English and Portuguese. And then the other song is Wonder Bread, which you hear mostly in the end credits, which kind of tells the whole story of the movie in a through a weird uh, Alice in Wonder Bread kind of uh, uh, looking glass way. Um, uh, Wonder Bread is a recurring theme in the film, if you, if you recall, and, uh, and the, their connections to ITT and the Nixon administration. And it's a weird conspiracy, yeah. but strangely enough, is mostly true. So ITT really did own Wonder Bread during the uh, during the era of the Nixon administration. All right. Well, so go figure. Um, but anyway, but they're fun songs. That's the that's the important thing. But um, but yeah, but you can listen to them digitally on iTunes or Spotify or uh, wherever mm-hmm. fine digital songs are uh, sold. Digital yeah. files exist, yeah, <laughs> or streamed. Um, Eighteen and a half, directed by and co-produced, co-written. I, I wrote the story with Daniel and then Daniel he wrote the Mar- Moya. play. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, and then uh, Daniel, Terry, and I uh, were the produ- three producers of the film. Right. It's currently so, playing. And then for- I was the editor and I was the, I, I baked sourdough for the cast and crew. I did all kinds of things. <laughs> you sure do. It's an independent film, you know. Um, yeah. Which, uh, thank goodness, um, are still coming out. Everybody, you can see one at the IFC Center right now. Is it still? Is it being? Is it still available at any of the the uh, the uh, Lemleys, or is it already done? I think it's done at Lemleys. Um, okay, but it is playing in Irvine, California, this okay. week. Um, I mean, it's playing a total of sixty cities over the course of June. Um, right. So, and in in theaters only, uh, just like Top Gun and Memoria. It's uh, you can't get it on video on demand yet. Uh, you will eventually, but uh, but not yet. So, uh, for example, this coming weekend, uh, June 10th, um, I'm going to Seattle where it's playing at the uh, Seattle International Film Festival has the, has a theater, the Egyptian theater. So we've got our big Seattle premiere there. And um, but it's uh, it, it. Oh, I found out on the train this morning. It got held over in Corvallis, Oregon. Naturally. For the that's Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Which is really fun. I didn't right. know anyone was seeing it in Corvallis, but now they have a chance to see it twice. Well, Dan, let me just say this about that. Baby Rebozo and I are going to go catch your film <laughs> this week. <laughs> and say, where, where was the name of the town that the, in, in California? In, uh, right? uh, where he uh, uh, was. San Clemente. San Clemente. Well, yeah, San Clemente. He was living, yeah. And then, he, and well, then he grew he up from then, so. Yorba Linda. Right. Your Belinda, that's what I want. To, yeah. yeah. Your Belinda, my that's right. Your Belinda. Either way. I, I, well, there's a great theater in Your Belinda. <laughs> um, I think Irvine is the closest to uh, uh, okay. playing there. Um, but it really is playing <laughs> in all kinds of different states. It's playing in Albuquerque this week. It's going to be in Omaha um, uh, on July, starting July 1st. It'll be in Lincoln, Nebraska, I think briefly next week and then again in the fall on, in november so mm-hmm. we actually just booked a theater in new jersey for october so okay. even though the video the digital may be coming out sooner than later we're still going to be rolling out interesting okay. well let me know when that happens well into the fall let me know when that happens we'll post okay. this on our youtube channel right away uh but we can also hold over once it's streaming we could put it on the podcast that's i think Great. the way to go you know, if I wait to put it on the podcast this week, it'll be over. You'll miss it a lot more. So it doesn't, I don't think it's worth it. But anyway, uh, we can post it later. You know, we'll take advantage of that. Once it's once it's up, once it's up, uh, sorry, once it's up um, on streaming platforms, we'll, we'll put right. this on the podcast. Okay, great. Once it's available, so people can go right okay. from here. So that should be, look. that should be July 5th in North okay, America. Okay, it's coming. Oh, so and it's coming right up. Perfect. All right, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. It. 
but try to uh, see it in theaters if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, of course, um, right. People should definitely and then, always put And then it. in England, because I know you have a big following in, huge. in England and, huge. and also it's Ireland. Huge. huge. In uh, England and Ireland, or the UK and Ireland, it is coming okay. out on video on demand on July 11th. So, um, but we've uh, we've gotten some of our best reviews out of England, which is well, I, I understand it. You know, um, it's like they're smart there. <laughs> well, I think the interesting thing about about a film like this, because we've we've played it at 21 festivals around the world, and is that it the it resonates and is relevant to different people in different parts of the world because they've all got their own kind of had their own twisted scandals and right and political. I mean, right so now, like, if you the, if you read the headlines, Boris Johnson just barely squeaked by yeah. in a no confidence vote. I mean, wow. apparently okay. his he's he's really uh, got a tough road ahead, which you know, no sympathy yeah. here, but yeah, no, and and when we showed the film in England at the Manchester uh, Film Festival, where I won the Best Director Prize, um, they everyone said, "Oh yeah, this is just like the Boris Johnson scandal." You know, it starts with something goofy, and then just the cover up is worse than the crime, and um, you I know, think in that's... Spain, yeah. Oh Please. no, I was just saying in, in Spain, people said, "Oh yeah, this reminds us of Franco," and in Brazil, they were like, "Oh yeah, this is just like Bolsonaro." So it's um, yeah. So it's it's really been interesting yeah. to see how different people relate to the film. But at right. the end of the day, it's about these great characters and right. And it does get goofy. So I know, sure. I know. <laughs> Cut to Kathy and Curtis and uh, you know, um, <laughs> Curtis Fondy Hall, Kathy Curtin, Richard Kind, um, the two leads. Oh, uh, Willa Fitzgerald and John McGarrah. Thank you. Um, you people. Go go look go to what's website. We'll put it down here. Uh www18 and a half movie.com. The 18 are numbers and the rest is spelled out. So right. 18 okay. and a half movie.com. Yeah. Um and um engage with uh that that movie, everybody. Yeah, and it'll be on airplanes uh by September and DVD and Blu-ray in the fall. So we've got uh, a lot of different ways people can can see the movie one way or another congratulations thank you thank you right. um thank you adam i'll see you i'll see you in la in the fall i hope i hope so yeah Cel great. celebrate my 45th birthday oh my gosh don't believe him don't believe him. no but, uh, but uh, yeah i'm gonna celebrate in uh, la i think everything goes fantastic right. <laughs> anyway enjoy the rest of your time safe travels no, back thank to you. la Thank you, Adam, and uh, I look forward to hearing Brasilia Bella and and uh, Wonder Bread on the radio. Yes, yes, but it could be on even Filmax <laughs> Radio if that's what you're getting. But yeah, uh, do you have? Oh, you know what? Get me a link to the digital tracks. Okay, I'll see can if you I can do, that? do that? Or just send me, or uh, send me a couple of. Yeah, send me these two or whichever ones yeah. you're plugging. Just send yeah, them. Yeah. You know, just the track. You don't have to send me the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, right. I'll see if I can do that. I have to check with Luis and see how we do that. So okay, because I like, um, well, I'm going to get this up. I guess I could that could wait till the podcast, but uh, um, okay, I, but but I could put this up without that. That's fine. Cool. The uh, the vinyl is fun too because it it just it sounds vintage. There's something nice about the 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 vinyl that sort of gives it a yeah more of a vintage feel. But um, but yeah, no, I'll send you the uh, the digital files for sure. Great. All right. Good nice seeing you again. Uh, I really appreciate yeah. having that time today. It was really nice. Yeah, no, that was wonderful. And, and thanks for uh, getting me to the train station. One My pleasure. Yeah. yeah, it worked out. All righty. All right. All right. Best done? to you and your family. <laughs> you too. Thanks. All right.